What's happening, Shredder Nation? Happy Tuesday. Welcome to episode number 94 of Living the Shredder Life. I'm your host, Jesse James Jimnick, ER Shred health slash nutrition coach. And tonight, I am really, really excited for a couple reasons. One, tomorrow is our official two-year anniversary since we launched the ER Shred. We have officially broken the 26 thousand person mark in the ER shred community. And if you're not there, please go there. It's free. And the amount of value and knowledge and expertise and support and community and culture, all the things I believe our world needs so much more of right now is there for you. And so that's one reason. The second reason is I have on my show tonight, one of my dear, dear friends. Um, she's truly become a, a mentor to me. Um, I call her like my second mom. I've told her before, even though she doesn't want to be that old. Um, but but in the essence of not the fact that she's old, you know that Linda, but in the fact that I respect you, your decisions in life, how you've worked so hard, what you've been able to do, um, you know, how you've set up your retirement. I mean, just everything that I look for in life, I just, I really respect from you. Um, I call you for advice and, and, you know, you're that, that go-to person that nobody's seen. And if, if you guys are watching this right now and you're like, who the hell is Linda LaMagna? Um, well, that's why I'm so excited because Linda is actually an OG shredder. Linda joined forces with me before we launched the ER shred. So she was using our, our supplier, our partner company, Isogenics. And then we decided to launch the ER shred. And Linda has been along for that ride the entire way. Um, she's not a big Facebook person, so she doesn't go into the group. She doesn't post. You've never heard her story before. <laughs> But she is freaking thriving on the ER shred lifestyle as a whole. And I'm hoping tonight that we're going to pull out so many tips and tricks and value for you guys. Um, seriously, get a notebook, grab a pen, because the stuff that we're going to bring tonight, I think, is going to bring some massive, massive value to your life. So with that being said, welcome to Living the Shredder Life, Linda. Hey, Jesse. First of all, thank you very much for the kind words, except yeah. saying I'm old enough to be your mother. <laughs> I'll let that slide for the call, but also a big congratulations to you and Sean on two years with ER Shred. What Thank you. an amazing opportunity for all of us. Yeah. An amazing accomplishment for you guys. Um, you are changing lives mm. every day and I am testament to that. Mm. So thank you for having me. I think we're going to have a, a, a lot of fun on this call. You and I, when we're together or talking, we always laugh and, for and sure. learn from each other for for sure. As much as you say I'm a mentor to you, you know, right back at you, you have literally changed my life and I mm. couldn't thank you enough for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I just want to make sure, you know, thank you for saying me and Sean, but gosh, I would be a fool if I didn't, if I didn't acknowledge the other board members, um, Susan and Heather and other people that have been a part of it, like Bob and Adam and Colin and all the people that have have really, you know, jumped on board and kind of helped us build what we have today. This has never been about a one man show. Um, this is about a collective. This is a community. You know, this is a big barn fire where everybody brings their logs because when everybody puts their log on that bonfire, it burns brighter. There's more heat. Everybody can be taken care of. You know, it's like that wise old quote where it says, when tides rise, all boats rise, right? Um, and that's really the key of what our mission is with the ER Shred. So yes, we want to impact lives. Yes, we want to change lives. But we want to give people that didn't feel like they had a place a place. We want to give, you know, all those people because it's so important. So thank you for saying that. But I just wanted to make sure that I that I acknowledged all those other people as well. Um, Absolutely. So let's dive in, Linda. Why don't you just start off, let everybody know how we met because I think it's a it's a pretty cool story about how we even met and and you know how we got into this and and kind of where you were um in the, in the beginning over a couple years ago if you don't mind yeah absolutely so you and I met three years ago almost three years exactly I think it was like the July time frame 2019 you walked yeah. into my little business I had a wallpaper um and paint interior design center mm -hmm. you walked in um, and literally I was like, damn, I want to look like that, <laughs> like, not like Jesse, but like my version of Jesse. Yeah, yeah. 
um, and I was about a year from finishing cancer treatments, but I thought I was fit. I had in the, in the prior couple of years, I had run my first half marathon. Well, two, I had run two half marathons. I was running three times a week. Um, I was doing Pilates twice a week and I thought I was fit. And then you walked in and I was like, hmm, I guess there's always, there's always somewhere else to go. Sure. And I think within the 10 minutes that you were in the store, aside from talking about business, your mm -hmm. business and potentially hanging wallpaper and us being a partner there, we quickly sort of dove into fitness and nutrition. And I don't even know how we got there, but you bring that out of people. So mm. I remember the first time we met, we probably had a 45 minute conversation about fitness mm -hmm. right there in the store. And, and that was the first time that Isogenics came up for me. Yep. Um, and you sort of sold me on the shakes. It started slow. Mm -hmm. um, I think I started with the Isogenesis, the Supreme and mm -hmm. the shake. Mm -hmm. And this was important for me. And tell me if I'm going too fast or I'm no. or you want to stop me. But when I started the shakes, I made one commitment to myself. And that was that the first thing I put in my body every day, aside from my coffee, because I can't function without it, is a shake. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, because I'm a foodie, if after that you want a donut or after that you want bacon and eggs, you can have it. But you've mm -hmm. got to start with the shake. Yeah. And today I tell people that, and you've talked about hydration after you wake up. Mm -hmm. I say, my body is like a sponge, right? And mm -hmm. I'm sitting on the side of the sink every morning and that sponge is dry. And mm -hmm. I have a choice of what I rehydrate the sponge with. Mm -hmm. And it can be orange juice and a donut, mm -hmm. or it can be a really healthy shake with all mm -hmm. that good nutrition and protein mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. So mm. for three years, I yeah. can look at you and say there has not been one day that the first thing I haven't had nutrition wise has been a shake. Mm. I've traveled the world. Some days the shake is better than others. I spent two weeks in Europe living out of a hotel mm -hmm. and it literally was tap water shake in my shaker. Mm -hmm. And I would down that and then go to breakfast with my colleagues. Mm. That's okay. Mm. Um, but I made that commitment to myself and it has worked wonders. And that's wow. sort of how we started. One simple yeah. day. Yeah. After our initial meeting. I love this. We're not even eight minutes in. And I think what you just shared is so valuable. So I just want to highlight it real quick if I can. Um, you know, you, you said something. You said, I made a commitment to myself that the first thing I do is I drink this shake. And I love the analogy. It's like, look, like I'm a dry sponge. And that's like, I never thought of it that way. And I was like, holy crap. When you just said that, I was like, that is freaking genius. This is why I love you. Like we always have these conversations and we always come up with these like amazing things. Like guys, look at yourself like a dry sponge every day. And you have the choice on how you're going to rehydrate that sponge. And it's, if you look at it like that, I mean, it's pretty common sense, right? Like I can choose to hydrate myself with stuff that's going to make me more dehydrated in the, in the essence, like look at it in big context. I'm not talking yeah. about actual dehydration, but like dehydration in the sense of like, I'm going to screw up my hormones. I'm going to jack up my blood sugar. I'm going to do all this stuff that I know donuts and orange juice and all this other things can do. Um, or you can choose to, you know, have some amp hydrate. You can choose to have your shake. And then from there, you know, this is why I think, you know, when I talk to Linda over the years, this is one of the reasons that I believe I, I actually almost, I almost want to say that I know, but I don't want to pretend I know, but I think, I believe that this is why you've been able to stick with it when so many people fail is because you're just telling yourself like, look, Linda, like drink the shake. And then you've given yourself permission that if you still want to do something else, by all means, go and do it. And you shared with me last time I talked, what normally happens though? Like if you say, I really want to go have that donut or that whatever, if you, if you choose you first by, by choosing the shake, what normally happens after that? You don't want anything else. Right? <laughs> so there's two things there. One is when somebody tells me I can't do something or I can't have something, guess what? You're going to do it. That's all I want. That's yep. all I can think about. Yep. 
so I have to give myself grace on anything. Mm. If I start out on a run and I don't, I, I'm just not in the mood, just run to the corner mm -hmm. or run the first mile out of your four mile run and then be done. Walk the right. rest of it or turn around. Right. When I give myself that grace, I run the four miles. Mm. I eat the shake and I don't want anything else because believe me, I, and you know this, you were in my house last week. Yeah. I like my, I like my little bite of sugar. For sure. I do. And I know the bad things that come from it. But when I'm making my shake in the morning, the cookies are sitting right there. Yeah. You know how easy it would be to say, well, while I'm making the shake, let me just have one cookie. Mm -hmm. That's why. So I make the commitment. I drink the shake. I say to myself, you can have the cookie as soon as you're done with the shake. And by then, eh, mm. I don't need that cookie. Mm. So it's it's worked for me. Yeah. From so many perspectives, right? The rehydration of the sponge. I'm the first thing I'm doing is putting in really beneficial things for the mm -hmm. cells in my body. Mm -hmm. Two, I'm not having those those little extra calories that we all take in by just oh, let me just pop that in as I'm walking by. And I was in corporate America for years. I can't even tell you the quick calories I've popped in. Just oh, I'm walking by the plate of cookies. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. walking by somebody's Halloween candy. Whatever mm -hmm. it is. So it, it, it's been beneficial to me in a number of different ways. Yeah. I love that. That's that. Yeah. That's amazing. So when you say you mentioned something, when you started, you said, I thought I was healthy. I thought I was there, but then there's always that extra level. Um, I guess what, what were you, what was the experience at that time? If, Cause I want everybody to really start, you know, to nobody's ever heard your story before. So I right. kind of want to really get this good painted picture for people. Um, where were you at when we first met? Like you were, you weren't in a bad place. I want people to understand. Like it wasn't no. like you were like crazy overweight. You weren't struggling per se, but like, what are some of the nuances that you now can look at and go, wow, that's where I was. Um, because you're not feeling them anymore. Just to give people a sense of kind of where you started before we kind of dive into more. Yeah. I'm going to go back a little further than yeah, please. from when I met you. I was in corporate America for 30 years. Okay. So that meant I spent a lot of time sitting mm -hmm. in meetings, mm -hmm. but I was also an exerciser. I didn't necessarily call myself an athlete, but I always exercised. Remember in the 80s and 90s, mm -hmm. it was sort of aerobics. I was one to get up in the, at five in the morning and exercise before I'd go into the office. So I always sort of exercised. But as you spend 30 years sitting in meetings and as you hit your 50s, your body changes. And, yeah. and I had gotten sort of what I call that middle-aged middle. Okay. And that's the thing that I think makes us women look old is when we start to get round. Yeah. But still I wasn't heavy. I found, I dressed differently so mm -hmm. I could cover it. Mm -hmm. It was what it was, I thought. And I thought it had to be that way because I was 50. Mm -hmm. Long story short, I retired from corporate America. I went into interior design, got my degree, went into interior design, opened this store with my business partner. So I was on my feet a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I started running at 50, which was the first time I had ever run. I always used to say my body is not built for running. Surprise. It can be. It is. Um, but I started incorporating just a bit more physical fitness. Mm -hmm. I lost a few pounds from, from my highest when mm -hmm. I left corporate America. So when I met you, it was good enough. Yeah. To your point, I didn't mm. have a huge amount of weight to lose. I was working out, but it, how do I want to say this? It's not where I am today. And I'm where I am today without really trying. Mm. So I was, we'll dive, we'll dive into that. Cause that's a we hot will. question. We'll dive into that. But I was, um, I was fit. I thought I was strong. I wasn't necessarily overweight. Nobody would have said I was overweight. Mm -hmm. Um, and I worked out a lot. Yeah. But it wasn't my potential. I wasn't at where I wanted to be if I mm. really aspired to physic to a physicality, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so that was sort of how it started. And I, I think 
to be honest with myself, the fact that I had had can cancer at what I considered to be a young age, and mm -hmm. you come in and didn't start talking about weight loss, started talking about health mm. and how the isogenics products would help with my health, would mm -hmm. not necessarily cure cancer and, right. and global warming, so to speak, but it can't hurt. It's going to help as you put in better protein, stronger products for your body. Yeah. So all of the things that I sort of needed to hear, I heard, and it wasn't around weight loss. Mm. It was around health and the benefits that nutrition can have to your health. And yeah. that, that rang the bell for me. Mm. That I love that. You know, I preach that a lot. I think it's worth bringing up again. You know, uh, you know, it's no secret that we, you know, 88% of Americans are, are metabolically unhealthy. Um, it's not a secret that we're dealing with the epidemic of uh, chronic overweight and obesity, um, not just in adults, but sadly in children today. Yes. Um, so that's not a secret. I'm not saying it to be mean. I'm not demoralizing anyone. It's just the harsh reality of what we've allowed ourselves to become as a society. And, you know, it's not, I'm not blaming anybody because there's a lot of factors at play here. Um, but I think a key thing that you pointed out is like, you're like, look, like, you know, you brought something up that kind of, I think people just are okay with, and you almost did that. Like, I'm so grateful that we connected because you said like, I was good enough. Like it was like, okay. But yet now you're saying I really wasn't at my full potential. And I'm wondering, like, I can't help but think, like, how many people right now, right now, I'm saying, I'm going to say millions of people are in that place where they're like, you know, I'm not necessarily at my full potential, but oh, I'm 40 or I'm 50. And you know what? It's just, it's just, that's just the way it's going to be. Like, and, and I, I get made it. excuses based on my age. Yeah. And that don't do that. Right? Why do you think we do that? Why, why would people do that? I don't know. It's an age. Have you ever thought about thing. it? I don't, like, is I, it from doctors? Is it from from marketing? Is it from magazines? Like what? I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe it is from all of that, right? Marketing to our age, yeah, which is crazy. And and so maybe it's a good thing that we now start to say fifty is the new 30, 60 is the new forty, whatever it is, because some of that advertising, some of that messaging has changed. Yeah. Um. And I'm grateful for it because that good enough, we don't have to be good enough. Right. We can be really good. However, we define that. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the benefit. It's up to me to define what really good is to me. Nobody yes. else. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought good enough was good enough until I moved slowly. And we'll talk about that because I don't yeah. say slowly in a bad way. Yeah. Slowly to, you know, I'm, I'm, pretty good right now yeah um man that was huge like i'm somebody put that in the comments please like i'm good enough like you gotta be well how did you just word it i gotta be good enough for me right for me only not based off someone else's per measurement you know, perception right like right i mean you know i can look at different physical bodies i can look at crystal and go oh my god i'd love to look like that yeah at my age i may never at my age with more effort, I might come close, right? There are women my age that mm -hmm. are just banging muscle, body, physical calorie, but everything is a balance. Right. And I think we need to find that homeostasis where we can be, where we're good, we're happy with ourselves, mm. and we're not sacrificing everything else in our life. That's right? the key. Yes. One of the things I've walked away through this entire process, and we've only sort of scratched the surface, yeah. is it's got to serve me. Yes. How does it serve me? Mm. Whether it's what I put in my body, whether it's the time I spend working out, whether it's the time that I forego working out for a day because something else is more important. Those things are all okay. Yeah. And they all serve you in different and positive ways. Yeah. Now, there's there's a lot of people out there that are like, okay, Linda... Easy for you to say now, right? Easy right. for you to say because they're they're in this position where, you know, they might be struggling and be 60, 70, 80 pounds overweight. They might feel like the world is crashing down on them and, you know, all of that. And, and you know, hang with us because 
Linda's going to share with you guys what she means by taking it slow. This is this has literally been not just a three year journey, but I think there's so much back end work as well. You know, I always talk about the foundation, right? And you 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 had a foundation, even though there were cracks in the foundation. Mm. And what I mean by that is like things that you thought were right that maybe we've learned aren't so right anymore. But you know what you're speaking about that homeostasis and that balance and that that being okay, because so many people, Linda, think that health is like all or nothing. You know, they look, they look at me and they go, oh, well, you know, you never this and you never that. I go, well, hey, thanks for thinking that you know my life, but you don't, Um, you don't know that. So that's, that's one. Like I, I have a lot of fun. I mean, you know that, like I am always having fun. And for me, it's just my goals are my goals. Like you can't compare what I want compared to what you want. Like you have a very different thing that of how you want to live your life right now. And for me, you know, I still want to be running up and down mountains at 90 years old. Like, so I'm doing what I do today for that bigger purpose. And that doesn't have to be your purpose. You know what I mean? Like you might just want to be able to wake up every day and have the energy to get on the floor and play with your kids or grandkids yeah, or or your nieces or nephews. And if that's your sole purpose, like, go for it is what we're saying. Like be okay with it. Not an all or nothing. Be okay with it. Not like, you know, this whole mentality, Linda, that we've created of like, Oh, you know, I went out to dinner. I went out with the girls and had some wine and cheese. So like, Oh, I ruined everything. Like I might as well just, you know, (laughs) boy, and we go on this like roller coaster ride of self-sabotage. And then it just like escalates and escalates and we get that analogy of balance and homeostasis and getting to a place of being okay. And I know that's taken a lot of time and work. Um, and I want to point that out too, is that this isn't an overnight thing. No. Like so many people, they're like, Oh, I did 11 days. Like I should be, I should be fixed. Like, no, you shouldn't be fixed. You've spent freaking 15 years trashing yourself. Like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? So yep. I love well, it. What did I tell you when we first met? What was, what did I tell you was on top of my six pack abs? Uh, cheese, right. What'd you say? My wine and cheese. My wine and cheese. Yeah. And you, I know, because I always bust you. <laughs> I, know. I know. I said, look, under the wine and cheese layer, there's six pack abs. Right. But wine and cheese was just to your point. Wine and cheese was something I didn't want to give it up. Mm-hmm. Do I do it every day? No. But do mm-hmm. I allow myself on a Saturday night to make a charcuterie board, have some friends over and have wine and cheese? You bet I do. Yeah. And I don't wake up Sunday morning and flog myself right. because that doesn't serve anything. Right. And one of the one of the things that has been really important for my entire life, Jesse, is I have said I've never been on a diet. Mm. Never in my life have I been on a diet. Do I modify what I eat? Sometimes. Mm. But diet to me has a connotation of you have to sacrifice things. You have to stop eating things. And what did I say earlier? As soon as you tell me I can't have something, that's all I want. Yeah. So, you know, that's funny. I just heard this analogy. It's called the purple elephant analogy. If I say, hey, Linda, don't think about a purple elephant. What's the first thing you do? Right. Think about a purple elephant. Think about a purple elephant. You know what I mean? So I love that. And, And I love that you're bringing this up because- we're, we're, we've hammered this home in ER Shred. I mean, people have gotten mad at me. They're like, why don't you just give me the answer? Why can't you just tell me? And, and they don't realize it until six, seven, eight months later that if I did that, it would never have given you the empowerment of what you're sharing today. They, they would never have come to the realization on their own that like, I don't need to tell you what to eat and what not to eat. I can give you the foundation. I can tell you from all my years of research and study that you're a human being and we need the fundamental essentials. Like that's not negotiable because there's so much proof in literature and and publication that it's kind of like, it's, you can't argue it. You know what I mean? Like you'd be a fool to try to argue, you know, that, good quality meat is very bioavailable. You'd be a fool to argue that the the phytonutrients and, and, and polyphenols found in some plant material, you know, you can't get from other places. Like you would just be a fool because of that, you know? So it's, it's so awesome that we're kind of getting in this like big level, um, which is really what, what I hope that we would get into, which is what you and I always do. You know, it's Uh not so much a specific, you know, um, it's that big level stuff. So that, that's well, awesome. and, and you talk about empowerment and answers, right? 
I, every time I talk to you, I take away a tip or a trick and it's typically something to add. Mm. What can I add to my life, whether it's yep. from a nutritional perspective, working out, whatever it is, it almost never is you telling me something that I should take away. Right. Right. And over the course of three years, I'm point. so far removed from sort of that starting point of just a shape mm -hmm. in a good way. Yeah. My life has evolved just in taking tips and tricks and talking to you. Mm. And it's empowered me. I then am the one that is able to say, well, if I'm going to add grass fed beef, what can I take away that wasn't serving me well anyway? Mm, yes. So, um, but you I, made that decision I, on your own. Right. Because I, I talked to you a lot, but Jesse Jamnick has never said, here's what you need to do, Linda, at, you know, 57 years of age, this is what you should be doing. Because if yeah. you did that, no, it doesn't, yeah. that doesn't work for me. Purple elephant, it wouldn't work. Exactly. It wouldn't work. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But when I listen to you, when I listen to some of these um, amazing guests that you have on talk through their life, when I, when you or Sean or any of the people post something online, when I am on Facebook, I'm like, all right, let me try that. Mm -hmm. Some, mm -hmm. some work, some work really well. Others don't work at all, but then I get to make that choice. Yes. And that means that I'm in control of my nutrition. Mm. I'm in control of my health. I'm not looking for control online. Mm. You, you, you literally just summed up the motto of basically the ER shred in, in my opinion. You know what I mean? And I know from, I know I can speak for Sean and, and his wife, Crystal on this. And, you know, even, even my, my other good friend, Susan and have like, that's really what we hope for. You know what I mean? Like we don't want to tell you what to do. Like it, it <laughs> it's dirty, you know? And you also brought up a great point about the diet, you know? I mean, gosh, <laughs> Look, I mean, I look at it. Like, I always explain it. I go, it's real simple. Diet has the word die yeah. in it and lifestyle has the word life. Right. So are we choosing death or are we choosing life? And I know that seems like, oh, Jesse, it's not that easy. I don't want, I'm not meaning to make it seem like it's like so easy, but it really is that easy. If you can learn to flip the script and, and work on that, that mindset, work on the subconscious part of your brain where you have all these fake stories because that part of your brain doesn't actually know what's real and what's not. And, and it's so powerful. You know this from business yeah. and work that you literally can reprogram that part of your brain and make it believe. That's why they always say like, you know, vision where you want to go and all the Olympic athletes and pro athletes, like they have literally visualized themselves. Yes on the podium long before the gold medal was ever even won. They experienced, they, they wanted, they, they, they visualized how it was going to feel, what they were going to think, the sensation, the smell, what the weather was going to be like, like, I mean, in vivid detail. And it's, you know, it, 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 it plays into that. You know what I mean? It's a, Absolutely. It's a piece. You yeah. know, I, I have to tell you this little story and I don't know completely how it relates to the exact thing we're talking about. But one of the things I find, and I have members of my family that will say to me, hey, if I take the shakes Monday through Friday, mm. I don't do them on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> or I don't take the shakes with me on vacation, just right. to use the shakes as an example. Right. Or people want to call it a meal replacement. Mm -hmm. Like, I always scratch my head with that. If, if you're not, again, it's back to things like diet. Um, to mentality ourselves, right? Yeah. If I have a shake, I can't have the, the French toast that my husband's making me for breakfast. I don't think that way. Yeah. If it, if this is about putting good things into my body, why wouldn't you do it on a Saturday and Sunday? Right. Why wouldn't you take it away with you on vacation? Mm -hmm. Have that and then have the French toast. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's this mindset that we have to get away from telling ourselves what we can't do and have mm -hmm. and telling ourselves the benefit of doing and having certain things. Mm, beautiful. I love that. You're right. It, it's, I don't even have anything to add to that because it's just so spot on. <laughs> it's what's it's so spot for me. on. Yeah. Because and I love that. And you know, again, I, I hope everybody gets that too. It's Linda sharing what's worked for her. Um, 
I, I'm just going to kind of caveat that just because this is, this has been my life. It's my passion. Yeah. I've been fortunate enough to, to be lucky enough that people have chose me as their coach and I've been able to go on journeys with them and listen to life. And I have, I have seen these stories play out and, and the mentality that Linda's sharing, the people that, that understand that usually thrive. Whereas the ones that look at it as restrictive or, you know, all the things that you're sharing where I can't, or they're eliminating, or they, they've gotten, they've gotten programmed into believing these things because they've either been told it or read it or think it's right without actually knowing because we haven't done the work to, to figure that out. Like those people usually don't thrive. And, and I'm just sharing a, a broad yeah. spectrum analysis. Again, I, we don't know what's going to actually work for you or not. Um, but I think that the tips that Linda's sharing, I truly believe in my soul that anyone can benefit from these because the power of that shift um, you know, it's so much bigger than food, Linda. It's so much bigger than a shake. It's so much bigger than red meat. It's so much bigger than elimination. It's so, it's so much bigger. Like, yes. I just, I really hope that people can, can grasp that. It's just so much bigger because when you can do this, not only does it shift your health, which I think is the foundation of life because without health, we have no wealth, right? Um, there's no point in having a lot of money if you can't take care of yourself. There's no point. Like yeah. you, can't, you can't enjoy it. You can't travel. You can't give it away. You can't do things that you want to do. So I think that that's really such an important foundation for everybody. But having that right mindset is really going to, I, I think it's going to make or break people, you know? And if you don't have it at first, I just want to say that that's okay too. If you're, you know, I don't want you to listen to this and go, oh my God, like, I don't think I can ever get there. Like, oh my God, like this is, I'm, I'm so far away from this. Like, that's not why we're saying this to you. Um, we're just sharing with you that if you're willing to do the work, if you're willing to take the one step a day, like I posted something yesterday. It was like, look, like at the end of the day, it's like, if you never just take the one step forward every day, one step, yeah. whether that's one decision, one shake in the morning, and that's it. If you never do that, you're never going to experience what the compound pounding of that effect can bring. So you're right. Like if you're not willing to do that, you're not going to, it's not going to happen. You know, and if you're just stopping and going and, and starting and stopping and starting and stopping and oh my God, this, and oh my God, that, like it's not serving the bigger purpose of what you want in life, whatever that may be, better relationship, health, better physical exercise, more money, better business. Like I can go on and on and on. Like, I think it relates to everything. You know, you said something and it made me think of the words compound interest, mm. right? If you put a penny in the bank starting at 25 every day, yep. that's going to be worth a lot more than just the pennies you put in the bank. For sure. When you're 45 or when you're 65, right? There's compound interest on our money. There's compound interest on our health. Mm. It doesn't have to be, to your point, a giant leap. It just has to be one step every yeah. day. Yeah. And the compound interest of that will be far greater than the steps alone. Mm. Man, why have we not talked earlier on this? No. The, the knowledge that, you know, I hope people are going to start stalking you. They're like, I never heard this Linda before. She's not in our group. <laughs> They're going to start searching you out and be like, holy crap, like, 57 rocking it like doing her thing got her mindset kind. right no you are seriously come on um, well let me let me tell you one other thing go ahead. that has been really important for me I, you know i i adore you and you're so smart and you're so knowledge about all Thank of this you. that i listen to you intently so when er shred came about two years ago like i said okay if, oh yeah share this, this story <laughs> if this is jesse i'm gonna do this and I had two problems right off the bat. I hadn't eaten red meat in like 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I cannot cleanse for two days. Mm. And look, people can. I have friends that do it. And yep. I applaud them. This gets back to tell me I can't have something and that's mm -hmm. all I can think about. Right? Mm -hmm. It's it's the purple elephant. Yep. As soon as you tell me that when I'm done eating on Monday night, I can't have a purple elephant until Thursday morning, it's all I can think about. Right. So I have found that I've had to, I've had to modify 
for me. Mm -hmm. And it has worked really well. Yep. I will do a one day cleanse. I do intermittent, what I call intermittent fasting in the evenings. I stop eating by seven o'clock every night. Mm -hmm. And I don't have my shake before 10 o'clock the next day. That gives me what, 15 hours yeah. of the benefits of nothing yeah. running through the my benefits system. of fasting because they're amazing for sure. Right. Absolutely. So, you know, it's been so important to me to hear what you say and what your structure is and then say, what can I do that gets me maybe one step there as mm -hmm. opposed to the giant leap? Beautiful. Because the giant leap is going to cause me to fail. Mm. I know if I start a cleanse seven o'clock Monday night, I, I'm going to make, make it. it. Right. Yeah. So why, why do that? Right. I'm not doing this to fail on a regular basis. Right. I want to succeed, mm. even if it's in baby steps. Yeah. So, so it's almost like, you know, God, this is so, this is so, so important. If you did do that, it's almost like you're literally setting yourself up to fail. I and would, and I you've be. been, you've been strong enough to identify, you're like, look, like, okay, I get it. Like, you know, and this is what I hope people understand. Like, yes, there's research. Yes, there's published papers. Yes, it's peer reviewed. Like you, but you know what? Like F all that stuff. Like seriously, like there's that. And then there's what's practical for you. Right. And what you're sharing is like, even if I can get 60%, it's still better than zero. Because if exactly. I try to go the full thing, it's going to be zero. And, and then I get nothing. So then that nothing sets up another failure. And then that's, that failure turns into another failure. And then we're just failing and failing and failing right. and failing. And it's like, then we're not getting anywhere. You know what I mean? Right. And that kind of goes back to that all or nothing mentality. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. So I love this. Like you're thriving. You know, I, I know I shared with you that we, we changed the actual 11 day protocol for this reason, because yeah. I was like, you know, we, we were like, look, like we're creating diet mentality. We're creating people that think that they're going to fail. Like people actually thought that the only way that they could lose weight and get healthy was if they did a two day cleanse. And that is so ridiculous. Like, again, massive benefit with doing it if that serves you. But I'm going to tell you that the place that I'm at at 43 years old, running ultra marathons in the best shape of my life, I did not get here from a cleanse. Right. I got here because I've been willing to do the consistent daily work. And sometimes it's it's just a little piece like you're sharing, Linda. I mean, I think people think like, you know, they see a, a snippet on social media. They see Jesse lifting up a weight or, you know, doing some sort of workout or a picture running through the woods. And then you think that that's like my entire life. What's up, man? Um, you know what I mean? They, they think that and it's like, it's not that. Right. You know what I mean? It's not that at all. So thank you very much. Thank you. You're good. Appreciate you. Um, Good well, I've also right. found how important it is, and you and I have talked about this, to listen to your body. Yes. Right? And and that means maybe you have to take a day off. Jesse, Jim, not, Jim, Nick may not, but Linda Lamagna does. Yeah. And what that also means is if I've had a weekend, let's call it Super Bowl weekend, just to yeah. name something, yeah. right? Where yeah. it's chips and cheese and beer and wine. Come Monday, my body is sort of craving for a one day cleanse. Right. It needs to stop the madness, so to mm. speak. And I'll do a cleanse. And when I listen to my body, that one day is really simple for me. Mm. I can make it through because my body is saying, you kind of need this. You've yes. had enough junk. You partied. Clean it out. Yep. Yep. And so that, yeah, I, I think that's okay. So I love this because. What you just described is utilizing a tool in your toolbox when the tool is needed, right? Absolutely. Like, like dad and I go to work every day with a big giant toolbox full of tools. Yep. But on a daily basis, we really only use five of them every day. But every now and then, like I need to go back in the toolbox and I have to pull out a special tool because I need a special wrench or I need a special this. And I'm using my that. I can do it with my health. I can do it with anything else. But I'm just trying to paint this picture for you guys. Like that's literally what Linda is sharing with you is like 
tapping into that inner instinct, like the intrinsic voice inside you is so valuable. Like that's the one that you need to please. Not what the protocol says, not right. what the science says, not what anybody else says. Like, what are you saying to yourself? And then you got to learn to trust that voice because some of us have, have not learned to trust that voice. You know what I mean? And again, that's another whole bunch of work and stuff yes. like that. But it's really that bigger picture of, of being able to do that. Go ahead. What do you guys say? Well, a couple of things. One is there's two voices, right? We, we all sort of have the angel and the devil sitting on For our sure. shoulder. For sure. And that devil, every morning when I'm making my shake, is saying, eat the cookie, eat the cookie, eat the cookie. <laughs> so, and, and I've gotten, you've gotten good at listening to the angel voice, yep. right? We can yep. tell the difference between the two voices. But I know that there are people out there that, especially when it comes to their health, they don't, they can't always necessarily tell the Very difference hard between them. the two yes. different voices. Yeah. Um, and that, so that's important. But the other thing that I, I want to say to people is, you know, when, when Jesse first started talking to me about ER Shred, because it was Jesse, because I knew that if he was offering this, it was going to be the right thing to do. I so wanted to dive into this. But the thought of two two-day cleanses in an 11-day period scared the hell out of me. It did. I remember. So probably for four months of Jesse talking about it, I wouldn't address it at all. Mm -hmm. This... Nope, because I can't do it, so mm -hmm. I won't do any of it. Mm -hmm. And that's when I stepped back. I slowly started to incorporate red meat. And hey, it started with ground beef because mm -hmm. everybody can stomach a hamburger mm -hmm. if they can't stomach a steak. Mm -hmm. I'm now eating my steaks. Yeah. So there's been a progression. And then it started with a one-day cleanse every couple of weeks. Then I added in this intermittent, what I call intermittent fasting every day, because that's easy for me. Yep. I don't need the snack before bedtime. I can yep. finish by set. So my point is I, I took the foundational aspects of ER Shred, which to me are getting more protein into your body, getting the right kind of nutrition mm -hmm. into your body, finding out what foods serve you mm -hmm. and what foods don't. And then if you need a cleanse, listening to that, but I took those foundations, foundational points and yep. added them in, mm. in my way that worked for me. Beautiful. And I still say I do ER Shred, even though it's nothing like what you guys originally intended. Yes. You have no, like I literally have chills on my arm. I have goosebumps because it, it just like, it just, and I know I've shared this with you. It, it's, you know me a lot because we've spent a lot of time and, and, this is literally my passion. Like, yes, I, you know, that like, this is my passion. Like, I know I say this to people and you go, Oh, Jesse, he's just trying. No, 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 no. Like I literally think about this. Like when I hear these stories, like it brings such joy because I've been able over the years to get myself to a place like you, Linda, where it's like, it's complete peace. You know what I mean? Like I can eat, I'm just going to give this radical example. I can literally down an entire freaking extra large pizza to my face <laughs> And I will be perfectly okay in my mind. I will not feel okay, right. but I will be perfectly okay. And I will be okay with not feeling okay because for me, it's like, that's not me punishing myself. It's not me gorging. It's not me. It's just what the frick I wanted at that point in time for whatever reason. I don't even know why I want it sometimes. I just did. And, you know, again, I don't, I don't really go out and go all crazy and do that. Right. But like, guys, like I'll eat a cookie if I want to eat a freaking cookie. I will have ice cream if I want to have ice cream. I will go on a Saturday night and down your charcuterie board and have some wine with you. And I yeah. will enjoy it all. Now, now the wine's going to make me feel bad the next day. I already know that. But, but what is the value though? What am I getting? I'm getting social connection. I'm hanging out with an amazing friend. I'm creating bond that like, is just non-existent in the world anymore. So the positives of, of the experience are going to outweigh the little bit of a shitty feeling that I'm going to have. And I also know that I have the tools to get myself right back on track. And, and I, it, I hope people can realize that. Like that's, that's that really balance. The like that's it's the game, right? Stasis. Yes. That's that balance. Yes. And, and, the, and the question, how does it serve me? Every once in a while, that, well, not everyone, but the bonding, the friendship might be more important to you at that moment in time 
than what you're putting into your body. 100%. That's okay, but if it's like that six or seven days a week, that's when we have the issue. That's right. when we have the problem, right? right? Yeah. Me, and you know, it's funny, that like out. that's still that's still a big piece of the mind because I can appreciate that there's emotional connection to food. You know, I was just talking to, to a girl, you know, yesterday, her, her daughter, her other daughter, I'm going to work with all of them and help them. But she's like, look, like, you know, I went through a divorce. My daughter went through this and she's like, we're bored. And what do we do? We say, oh, we're going to go and eat this. And then it's all this like hyper palatable, high sugar, you know, thing where it's like, you're thinking that you have that, you have this connection, you're drowning out your sorrows. You're not realizing the hormone connection, the dopamine, the everything else that's going on. We're not going to dive down that rabbit hole, but like right. there's a cascade effect to all of that. And that has nothing to do with the food. It has to do with the mindset, but it's like, if you just had somebody to share with and listen to, and somebody listen to you, like actually listen to you, right? Like you yeah. and I were talking about something very important in my life that I struggle with before this call. And like, you almost like literally like, you don't understand, like you took a load off. Like I literally fucking felt heavy this morning and like just, just having that. So it's like, to me, that's so much more important. You know what I mean? And that can, that can fill my cup yep. bigger than any cleanse or bigger yeah. than any shake or bigger than any piece of red meat. Or even though those are all important, that yeah. fills my cup, you know? So yeah. keep going after the things that fills your cup. Realize it, it's not about perfection. There is no such freaking thing. Um, it's not the all or nothing. It's not the, you know, whatever. And I'm going to keep reminding people, Linda, yes. I know I, I'm very, I'm being very redundant with this, but it's like, it's super important that yeah. people really hear this message because if that's all they can take away from this, my God, did we, I think we, we, we gave so much value um, to a person who's struggling where they can be like, you know, know what like okay i'm not broken like i'm not wrong i'm not no you're not broken right. there's never been anything wrong with you you are not the fat person that's looking to lose weight you are an amazing human creation yes. that deserves to be healthy that deserves to feel amazing and maybe some shit's happened to you in your life and i get that some things are bigger people have dealt with abuse and sexual abuse and physical abuse and verbal abuse and they've dealt with trauma and i get it I get it, but you're not broken and we're using that. You know what I mean? And then we get into this mentality and then over a long time of telling ourselves this, we believe it. So it's like, we got to break that vicious cycle. You know, yes. we got to break that vicious cycle. It, yes. it's, you're not that person. Like you're, you're a person who's deserving that is you're doing this because you believe that you're worth it. If you can, if you can look at it that way, like you don't wake up every day and go, Oh, I, I got to drink my shake because I'm part of the shake game. Like, no. no, you're doing it because you deserve, you believe that you deserve to rehydrate your sponge with the best that po that's possibly available. And why shouldn't you? Why shouldn't you? You deserve that. You know what I mean? And that's why I refuse to look at any of this as taking things out of my diet or even using that word. I, I don't. Yeah. If we look at it as taking things away, right? I, I mean, I don't claim to know a lot about abuse, but I can imagine that if you are abused, somebody has taken so much away from you so already. Much. Yes. Why then would you look at all of the things that can help you nutritionally and look at it negatively? Well, mm. if I have a shake, I have to take away the what I really want for breakfast. Yeah. No, we're adding things because you are worth it. We're adding good things back into your life because you are worth it. Right. And and to flog yourself for these little here's an example that that made me think I thought of as you were just talking I was as you know with my dad this weekend yep and since my mom has passed away his new love language is cooking for us mm -hmm. so he got up and made pancakes with blueberries and syrup and that is I don't even like pancakes <laughs> let alone want all that Right. sugar and crap in my right. body but that's his love language yeah so does it serve me to eat them yes because it it sends a signal back to him that his love language is being received yeah so i drank i downed my shake and then i sat down for a plate of pancakes with mm -hmm. him right so we need we need to think about how we can give to ourselves and how mm. we can be giving back and we can do that with the way that we incorporate food into our day-to-day -day life. For sure. Yeah. 
it, it, it's fun. You know, <laughs> it's so much more than food, but at the same time, if you really grasp the concept of, you know, when you stop looking at food as a reward system or entertainment, and you look at food at what it's really designed to be, which is food is molecules. Yeah. And, and people aren't realizing that every bite that you choose to take, whether good or bad is, is sending these, these signals. And these signals are not like one little signal. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of signals in an instant flash every single second your body is transmitting this stuff you know and when you start to break it all down it's like wow so it's like when you you know what, what do i mean by this like if you're if you're looking at it in the context that linda just shared like if we've had the trauma if we've had the abuse if we're struggling and then we're just adding more onto that struggle ourselves versus looking at it like, okay, this can, this can at least give me the energy. This can, this can make me feel better. And then if I'm feeling better and I have the energy, well, maybe then I'm going to want to work out. And then if I work out, I can create all the amazing benefits from that. And if I create the amazing benefits from that, that's going to cascade over into my confidence. And then if I have my confidence, well, that's going to cascade over into my relationship with myself. And then it might cascade over into my relationship with my work, with with my, with my kids. And, and with the way that I'm a business owner, or I'm an employee, like literally that's how it, that's, that's another example of compound pounding, right? Like compounding interest on our entire life, not because of, again, we're going to use food because it's so powerful, but like, look at it as the metaphor that, that, that we're using food to be food's the catalyst, right. To bring you along that journey, exactly. because it's serving your body, which is your temple, which is your grail, which is like your creation, your whatever you want to look at it as, right? right? I don't know like what you believe or whatever, but whatever you want to believe, right? Like that's that that fuel that you need to even get the wagon going in the first place in the right direction. Right. Yes. You know? so, Absolutely. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay. So that's a lot. Like that's a lot of amazing information. I'm so glad we went big picture. Um, I do want to just make sure like, you know, we've talked, we've kind of tiptoed around it, but I just want to share with people like, what does a day-to-day look like for you? Um, You know, I know you start every day with a shake. People get confused. Like, you know, some people, Linda, you know, again, I want people to realize that when you started, you were in your own place. And if you're listening to this, you might be in the same place. You might in your mind think you're in a worse place. You know, you might have a lot of weight to lose. You might need to be a little stricter, more rigid, um, whatever it is that's going to serve you. But I want people to know that there is a bigger picture. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. It's not about doing the 11 day on repeat over and over and over again, year after year after year after year. Um, I love also that you said like, look, I'm still a shredder even though I'm not doing the two day cleanse or even though I'm not doing every single thing, like I'm following the foundational pieces. And that's the message that I really want to hammer home going forward is like, take the foundational pieces, which is quality protein. It's non-negotiable. Again, why? Because there's evidence, right? The hydration, why? Because it's non-negotiable. The move your body every day, because if you understand that as a human being, you're not designed to be sedentary, you're not designed to live the lifestyle that we choose to live today, like you're not understanding the benefits. This isn't about building biceps. I mean, we're talking about life or death. We're talking about being harder to kill. We're talking about being able to fight disease. We're talking about, you know, if something does get you, you're going to be able to fight back. So like those are the foundations. And then it's creating your magical blueprint is what what we yeah. call it in ER shred. And that's food, that's life, that's thought, that's relation, that's everything. Right. So like, just take people through like, What's kind of been like, um, you know, at first you said, you know, obviously I didn't eat red meat. Now I'm eating steaks. And, you know, again, I want you guys to realize, like, I watched Linda do this. It was never like, Linda, you have to eat the steak. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like Jesse, I'm a salmon girl. I'm like, then eat all the salmon you want. Just put a little slab of butter on it. You know what I mean? Like, get some extra fat. Like, you know, whatever you got to do. So kind of take people through that journey and then and then share, like, what life looks like today. Just so people can kind of see um, and, and understand, like what's to be, I guess, or or what's an example of what somebody who's thriving, you know, does. And again, not that you need to be Linda, but take what she's saying and then kind of put it into your life. I just want to caveat that with that. So. 
So I've already said it's been a, a journey or a process. Yep. The, the shakes I sort of started with a purpose. And that, that might be the, well, the shakes I started with a purpose. So it was probably a year where I just did the shakes, like I said, the isogenesis. Yep. And then I started to branch out a little bit. I bought myself some hydrate. Yep. Um, in the, um, I live in the South. So summer's in the South. You sort yep. of need that extra yep. that comes with hydrate and in addition to just plain water. Um, then I sort of started to clean my body a little bit with these one day cleanses, but I'm not prescriptive. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's when I feel like I need it. Yep. Then I added in the red meat. Um, and, and what I'm, the way I think today, there's a couple of things. One, I'm much more focused on getting in protein. So I have a shake in the morning. I typically have a high protein uh, Greek yogurt for lunch. And then, you know what, if I'm home and I'm still hungry, the cheese might come out. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes it's grass-fed cheese. Sometimes it's freaking Costco cheese. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's not a pound of cheese. It's a couple of slices of cheese to satiate right. What I need. Right. But again, it's the yogurt first for me or a second shake for me. Try yep. to get in 15, 20, 30 more grams of protein and then yep. some cheese if I want it. And then for dinner, it's typically steak or salmon um, and maybe a vegetable. Sometimes it might just be the piece of protein. Yeah. Um, and, just depends and, on the day, right? Exactly. Yeah. And look, one day last week I was. It was a high stress day. Carbs are still my pasta is my comfort food. It was a thing of pasta. Yep. It wasn't even good. It was jarred sauce. But sometimes the body just needs. Right. But I can't do that every day. Right. And, and that to me is one of my key learnings. I don't deprive, but it's not the norm. Mm. It's outside of. So me. important. Absolutely. Yeah. If I need a piece of milk chocolate, which has no nutritional value at all. My body is saying, you just, you need it. Mm -hmm. Fine. Have one bite this big, not mm -hmm. the giant candy bar mm -hmm. and be done with it. Yeah. Um, and again, I'm not, I'm not trying to lose weight. I want to be fit. I've added in more weights. Um, but I've also gotten recently even less prescriptive in my workouts. It used to be Pilates twice a day, running three times a day, and maybe weights. Mm -hmm. Well, as we get older, we know the benefit of doing more weightlifting, especially mm -hmm. for women. Mm -hmm. um, but I've started to also play golf. And I hit the ball so many darn times that that's a lot of exercise for me too. Sure is. So my point when I wake up is, what are you going to do to be active today? Mm, I love that. As opposed yes. to it's Tuesday, it's a running day. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, and, and believe it or not, I usually do that the night before, because if I don't wake up with a plan, I don't have a plan. Mm. So, you know, as I'm going to plan, today, plan to fail, right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, I, I, my Pilates sessions are scheduled. But if it's not Pilates, then, okay, what are you going to do tomorrow? Sometimes mm. it's weather dependent because I don't run in the rain. I'm a mm -hmm. fair weather runner. I know mm -hmm. a lot of people do. I applaud that. But if it's going to rain, then I'll do weights at the gym or even mm -hmm. in the house. Um, if I play golf, then I don't worry about doing anything else because that's exercise. I'm in the fresh air. I'm in the sunshine. Mm. I'm, in, I'm chasing this little white ball. Um, so I've, I've been able to add in a lot more fun things that keep me active. Mm. And that's been a huge benefit. So whether it comes to food or activity level, it, it's it's become more fun, I guess, as I've gotten a little older. Mm. I think that's a huge tip. Like, how can you make it more fun? You know, and, and I, you know, to second what you're saying, like, you know, when I'm when I'm training for a race that's coming up, it's actually not that enjoyable, right? It's not that enjoyable. And, and it's like, well, wait a minute. Like, why would you go run 50 or hundred miles then with 11,000 feet of gain? Because I'm looking for the satisfaction of the end goal. 
but the process actually is very rigid. You know what I mean? It's like yes. when you're training for a 50 mile race. It's like this day, this day, this day is this on this day. I have to uh -huh. run this many miles on Saturday. It's 15 on Sunday. It's 20 on Monday. It's recovery on Tuesday. It's functional on Wednesday. It's this. And now it's like, I'm not training for a race, right? I'm back into my heavy lifting. Like yeah. I'm motivated to come out. Um, I, I have a structure because I've been doing it for so many years that like, I don't necessarily have to be like, okay, here's my workout. Like, I'm like, okay, tomorrow I'm just going to do, I'm going to do legs. And I'm like, I'm back into that. And like, but people don't realize like I flip flop all the time. You know what I mean? Like yes. I, since, since we've run the, the Squamish 50, which we just did, Crystal and I yeah. didn't finish, right? 50 miles, 11,406 feet of elevation gain and descent to go on top of that. Like, I don't think I've run more than five miles in one shot. Right. Where before I was doing it and I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun. Like there's days that like, you know, we have a baby, like we're giving ourselves grace. Like sometimes we don't sleep right. So it's like, that has to be adjusted. And it's like, I'm not going to keep beating myself up. Like I'm going to find ways to have fun. Some days it's just walking my dogs, which is three mm -hmm. miles, four miles of dog walk. And somebody would be like, Oh, well I just walked. I'm like, no, you walked. Like you were active. Like, right. They, like we get these like weird things in our head. It's like, okay, I say, Jesse says, move my body. So I must have to go to the gym. No, I never said go to the gym. I said, move your body. I don't right. care if you sit, stand up and sit down 20 times in a freaking chair, you moved your body. And especially if that's the level that you're at, like you gotta be okay with it. And then incorporate that fun because if there's no fun, if there's no enjoyment, if you're dieting to die versus living with lifestyle, right? You're not, you're, you're, you're rigid. You're not having fun. You're fun. Like, what do you think the chances are for the long haul? Because that's the key is what's the, like golf is about the long game, yes. right? And it's, it's the, the overall, and I don't know much about golf. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the long game. I know there's a short game on the, on the green, but, um, it's the long, you know what I mean? And the same thing with money and finance and life. Like, you know, I remember being 18 years old, trying to compare myself to like a 50 year old being like, what the fuck? That's not fair. And they right. got this car and they got that much money. And I'm like, well, I had to come to the realization. I'm like, dude, you're 19 years old. Like yeah. you're 22 years old. Like you just, you haven't gotten there yet. You haven't, this person has 30 more years of commitment than you. Like go 30 more years and show up every day. And then see what happens. Like, see if you're there and then compare yourself. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the goal, the goal for me is to keep moving when I'm 80. Yep. Whatever that looks like. I played golf with a lot of 80 year olds. Mm -hmm. Their form is awful, but I want to be out there when I'm 80. Yeah. The way I run today is not the way you and Crystal run. You would lap me. Multiple <laughs> times, but. I'm out there. But you move. Running. I'm out yeah. there. Moving. I want to be running my version of it, not your version of it, when I'm 80. Yeah. I do these things today so that in 30 more years, I can still be doing them. That's Ooh. the goal, right? Ooh. Yeah. You the know, that's life that's life. another that's another huge mindset trick that you just shared. Like, I really hope, I mean, guys, you need to go back and listen to this whole freaking thing again, because there's been so many little mindset hacks that Linda's really become a master of for her life. I want to, for her life. I think that it's really bigger, but I'm going to just say for your life. Okay. Um, yes. cause this is about you, but, um, you know, that, that mindset hack of, you know, looking at it like, why am I doing this today? You know what I mean? And I think sometimes we get so caught up in this. It just doesn't have enough depth. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, like, you know, I, I need to not do this because I have to lose five pounds versus like, okay, I'm going to choose to do this. So in a year from now, or in five years from now, or in 10 years from now, I can be in a position that I can still be enjoying life. And I don't need somebody to take me to the bathroom and wipe my tushy. I don't need somebody to tie my shoes for me because I can't bend over. Like this is the reality of what happens. Right. And it's like, look at it in that sense. And you're going to, you're going to take so much weight off your shoulders and, and release all this pressure that you're putting on yourself because of like what you think today means. Like, honestly, like you can go eat an entire bag of freaking potato chips 
And if you do that every day, it's going to be a problem. But if you do that tomorrow, I'm going to just tell you that is not going to make or break your freaking health. Right. You did not, you know, if you're 50, 60, 70 pounds overweight, you're suffering with type two diabetes, you're, you have rather, you did not get there from one bag of potato chips. I mean, to get yourself to that place, you, you've done a lot of not loving yourself in a, in, in the, the grand scheme of things. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, stop doing that to yourself, please. I'm begging you to please yep. stop doing that to yourself. And Linda's so kind to share like, you know, all these little tricks and these tips. And like, I'm telling you, like, I know she, she's very humble and she's not like, she's rocking it. I mean, like, like, no, I know, I know you hate this. And so do I, but you know what? You're going to take it. Um, she's fucking rocking it. I mean, from, from her health, you know, she, she's 57. Most people think it's the end. Most people are, are going downhill. You know what I mean? She's got that part. She's got her finances in line. She's got her happiness. Like, and does that mean that there's not tough days and there's not days where she doesn't feel, no, that doesn't mean that. But I right. mean, in the grand scheme of things, like, you know, I really hope you can kind of take the, the bigger context and, and say, okay, like what little piece this is the key. Don't try to do everything Linda shared. Don't do that. Yep. Take one piece and, and see if it works for you. Just try it, right? See if it works to you. Talk to yourself a little different. Make a different decision. And if it serves you, what do we do, Linda? We keep it, right? Right. And if it doesn't serve you, be okay with throwing it out the door. Like exactly. I learned that. Like I want to, I want to, you know, grow my money and I want to, you know, become financially free. I want to not have to worry about things. So I'm going to ask people that have that, that don't think they know what's going on, but they actually have it going on. Right. Which is why I would come to you for something like this, because I, I know like you've set yourself up and like, you know, <laughs> it's funny talking because you don't even realize it sometimes in your financial guys, like Linda, what the hell? Um, and yeah. I love that about you. I love that you're so humble like that, but man, like, you know, take, Maybe everything Linda told me doesn't serve me because her life's a little different, but I'm going to steal the pieces that do. And then I'm going to steal the pieces from somebody else. And I'm going to steal those pieces from somebody else. And that's kind of the gist of like even the ER shred. Like I had this realization going through school and I was listening to like, you know, I don't even know how many doctors and research scientists and everybody had the right way. And I was like, what the hell? Everybody had the right way. It was all, some were high protein, some were no protein, some were eat plants, some were don't eat plants, some were eat carbs, some were don't eat carbs. Some were, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Like, how are you all right? How are you all right? And I had this realization. I was like, holy shit. How did I get to this place that I'm at? Because this was further on when I had this realization. Like I was in shape, I was doing my thing. And I was like, wait a minute. There really is no one size fits all. Right there really is no such thing. Like what I do might not be the best for someone else. And, and even though the research that, you know, every specialist, Linda, every guru, they all had evidence to back up what they were saying. That was the hard part is I was like, wait a minute, that science said that, but that science made that not right. You know what I mean? And I was like, well, what's, what's real, you know? And it's like, so I, I don't know where I'm going with this, but it's just, it's hoping to show like, you know, Take the pieces. There's not a one size fits all. Like understand that what we're bringing to you guys is, is a smorgasbord, right? Yes. And, and you pick like, it's, it's a charcuterie. Let's use charcuterie board. It's a big giant charcuterie board. And you might not like everything on the charcuterie board. Everything on that charcuterie board might not serve you, right? right. Maybe that you like the black olives and not the green. I don't know. But, and then you just pick the black olives for exactly. crying out loud. Like pick the black olives and be okay with that. Like you don't yeah. have to do everything, you know, and not, nobody has the answers for you. Right. You have to be willing to do that work and do that journey and, and, and take those leaps and, and find those. Yeah. Things. Well, and we sort of need to be able to, decide when you talk about data and rationale the stuff that makes sense to you right you know i'm a, I'm a data-driven person i haven't read as much as you but i've read a lot and it's come down to one thing for me lately what did the cavemen eat and how did they mm. eat? because that makes sense right yeah our bodies are thousands of years old yeah our dna is eating years meatless old. hamburgers back yeah. then right and that, I, I, that has helped me sort of when I look at food and say, well, you know, I, I have friends that have lost a ton of weight and swear by 
a plant-based diet. Okay, that works for them. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't work even up here for me. Right. Because I, 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 I've heard you talk so differently. I've heard other experts talk so differently about how we ate 3,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. Yeah. So I've incorporated things back in, like the steaks, mm -hmm. that for 30 years I didn't eat. Mm -hmm. But it's important to me now. I'm a woman over 50. I need good, high quality protein. Mm -hmm. So plus the, all the other benefits that come with that, like the psyllium, the, the exactly. amino acids, the iron, the copper, the magnesium, yes. the zinc, the all the other stuff. You know what I mean? It's it's huge. Yeah. So it I it has to either be simple or I can't do it. I love it. Right. That. And for me, the the shakes, the hydrate, the protein. That's it. Cool. It's it's that. That's it. That's it. And, and everything else, everything else, right? Like that's the foundation, which we've talked about so much. Like that's your solid foundation. Yes. Listen, if you build the most magnificent mansion ever and you spend $5 million on this mansion, but you cheapskated the foundation and you, you gypped the foundation, your beautiful $5 million mansion will crumble. crumble. It may not crumble tomorrow. It right. might not crumble a year from now or two years from now. Right. But I guarantee to you that your beautiful mansion will crumble. Yes. And and without that foundation, you know what I mean. So I love how simple you put it. And I and I I want that message to be across the our entire community. Like that's the magic. Like yeah. understand that the magic is showing up for yourself every single day, choosing you over anything else every single day. Every single day is also part of the magic, right? Like. And it doesn't mean that it has to be perfect. It doesn't mean that it has to, you know, I think we've talked about that enough that I'm not going to go back through it, but choosing you in some way every single day and focus on the foundational pieces that like are like, you almost got to be an idiot to argue with because of, of the evidence, you know what I mean? Um, and that's the protein, the hydration and moving your body. I mean, yeah. that's the blueprint, like that's yeah. the foundation. Then you create your individual blueprint based off of what makes you happy, what serves your soul, what brings you joy, what brings you the most benefit to your life. And then the cool part is we got one of the most amazing communities that I've ever been a part of. That's going to that cheer you on, support you. We're going to cheerlead for you. We're going to pick you back up when you fall on your face. Cause that's inevitable. And that's going to happen too. And we all need that. Like Linda literally just picked me up off my face before we, we started this call. And I'm so thankful for that. Like <laughs> really, like I was like in his deep hole through last night and, and this morning. And, um, you know what I mean? So I, I hope that's the message that you guys are getting. Um, listen, Linda, I want to respect your time. I mean, I could talk to you for hours and hours and hours, but you know, we want to keep everybody and I got to have you back on to keep going. Like I, 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 you know, again, it's always your choice, but I would so much love to, to do more with this, you know, for you. Cause I think you, you have so much value and you could, you could help so many people, but I mean, obviously that that's going to be a choice of yours and stuff too, but what other, what am I, am I missing anything else? Any other valuable tips or little nuggets of information that you can share with somebody who's struggling right now? Maybe they haven't even started. Maybe they're on the fence going, man, is this really for me? Is this not for me? Like any, anything in, in that arena that pops to your head? I just start. Just start. And start simple, but yes. just start, right? Mm. Every journey starts with the first steps. For sure. So and, and the simplicity, you know, very quickly, and, and I don't have a whole lot more to say, but when you talk about moving your body and the hydration and the good for protein, if you need to lose weight, that scenario helps. If you need to gain weight, that scenario helps. If you want to build muscle, that scenario helps. For sure. So, you know, under, determine what your goals are, align your movement with them, and then supplement with the protein and the hydration. And mm. it's so simple. Mm. And Jesse, you know, I love talking to you. We could stay on the phone all day and we won't. But uh, anytime I am happy to do this and yeah. happy to pull you out of your funk because you have pulled me out of many of mine as well. Mm. So um, well, that's why we, that's why we jive so well. Right? I know. This I mean, listen, there's, pleasure. you know, I'm going to, I'm going to share this last thing with you. I've learned, I've, <laughs> 
I've done so much work on why, you know, throughout life, I've surrounded myself with the wrong people. I, I had what I call fake friends, um, you know, things that I thought I needed to make me feel full and whatever. And I just realized that it's, it's quality, it's relationships, it's good people. My inner circle, I am so protective these days. Yep. Like I am so, pro- I, I'll be acquaintances with people um, and I'll whatever, but I am so protective now of that, that inner circle. And there's literally only a handful of people. And I really do consider you one of those handful of people oh, for me, for thank me, you. Um, just because of the value that you can bring to my life. You're, you're always willing to listen. Um, you're willing to share, like, you're not scared to tell me the truth. Um, you're not one of these bullshit <laughs> friends. That's like going to just tell me what you think I need to hear. Like, whether I like it or not, you're still going to tell me. Um, and I just so admire that. I so respect that about you. Um, you know, Sean's another one of those. Susan is another one of those. Obviously, Crystal. Like, yeah. It, it just brings so much value. And I just, I'm so grateful for well, the journey for we've been on and what we've been able to do. So, because you have improved my life tenfold. Thank you. I, I'm oh. very happy about it. Like, thank you. I like, use a lot of words, but I mean, yeah, like I've, I've, I've struggled for so many years to find my, 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 you know, we want to, we want to feel like we, we, like, what are we here for? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, don't we all struggle with that? Like, what are we here for? And like, I keep coming back to this, like, I'm here to serve people. I'm here to help people realize that, you know, they're not broken because for so many years I felt like I was broken. I felt like, I, you know, I was an imposter. I was fake. Like I, I, I lied. I, I, I did all this stuff to like, I don't even, you know, I, yeah, I know why. Like I, I've been through the the work and I've done that, but like in the grand scheme of things, it's like, shit, like what the hell, you know? And I just, if I can shortcut that for somebody, if I can, if I can eliminate the 20 years of pain and suffering and I can get you down to four months instead of 20 years, yeah. like, my God, do I like, I, I can die tomorrow and feel happy knowing that, you know what I mean? That I can do that. So, I mean, for you to say that just, it really means the world. It's not like I need it to live, but it's like, it fills my soul. And when you find things that fill your soul, I think that's the magic trick, right? Like find that, that soul piece. And yeah. this doesn't ever feel like work to me. It's, it's. Well, and I think there's a whole nother episode just around how we view ourselves, how we build our life for sure. and how we ensure happiness yeah, and, and a serenity. And, you know, not again, every day is not serene, right. but if more of them can be serene than angst ridden. And there's too many people that we both know that their life is just angst ridden. For sure. So, you know, when your life is serene, when you find that inner happiness, it all sort of gels and mm. your nutrition and health go right along with that. Mm. Man, oh man. Amazing. Thank you. I think that's a perfect spot to cap it. Um, guys, listen, do me a favor, drop into the comments. Let, let us know, let Linda know, what did you take from this? What tip are you going to take? What are you going to try? What are you going to not try? Um, you know, drop in and let us know what, what value did you get from this? Um, I know this is Tuesday and we had our, you know, ridiculous big announcement yesterday with our new partnership, um, you know, with the Lexus and we're going to bring ER shred to a new level. You know, Sean says, Jesse, you can't say we're going to impact a million people. I say, damn straight. We're going to impact a million people. We're worldwide. I want that number to grow from there because I want to hit that and then say 2 million people. And I really believe that the pieces, you know, we, we laid the foundation, we built a strong foundation over these last two years. And now it's time to lay the framework. It's time to put on the roof. It's time to do the interior design. It's time to make it ours. You can buy a home, you can buy a house, but then it's, you make it a home, yeah. right? And now it's time to take our house and make it our own home. And I, I I can't wait to see what the next two years are gonna bring, the more lives that we're gonna impact, the, the things that we're gonna do, the, the people that we're gonna help with their health, physically, financially. I mean, the opportunities are, are truly endless for people here. Um, if you're not a part of the community, you're seeing this you know, outside of the community, maybe it's on my page or Linda's page, like www.ershred.com, www.ershredders.com gets you into the group. Just answer the three basic questions. We'll let you in. Um, don't miss the call tomorrow night, which is Shred Your Testimonial. Um, we're going to celebrate 
I believe, from the board. Um, our two-year anniversary, which should be pretty, pretty special. Uh, pretty, pretty special. I said pretty, pretty special. <laughs> um, we're going to celebrate that. Um, and man, I, we can't thank you guys enough for your time, your dedication, your commitment. Keep saying yes to yourself. Keep saying yes to yourself. Give yourself the grace. Know that it's for a bigger picture. It's not what's going to happen tomorrow, but what's going to happen down the road. You are freaking worth it. Health is our wealth. Level yourself up. You all freaking deserve that. Linda, thank you so much again. I, I really can't thank you enough. Continued I'm success, Jesse. You and the team, congratulations. Thanks so much. All right, guys, have an amazing night. Bye-bye.